How's everybody? Excellent. Good. Todd, you good? <laughs> I can't hear you, Todd. Oh, yeah, you're muted, Todd. <laughs> hey, John, Donna, very cool. Hey, Donna. John, hello. How you doing, JG? Oh, best day of my life, man. Best day of my there you life. Go. Get better every day. Gets better every day, bud. Gets better every day. Got Mark, that's good. Donna, hello. Boy, do I got something in I got something in store for you guys today, I'll tell you that. Um, You're inviting us to your house? Man, that's so nice. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so hey Donna, can you hear me? Wave? Yeah, you can hear me. In my, in my car, JG. <laughs> I like that hustle, girl. I like that hustle. Awesome. All right. Oh, doing great. Doing great. Thank you. That's awesome. Uh, Mark, awesome. John, awesome. Uh, if anybody can't hear me, let me know now because I'm going to start. Um, I guess, uh, Mary Beth, are we able to mute everybody? Um, I'll do some Q&A probably at the end, I guess. I think I'll do Q&A at the end or you guys could type your questions and I could... Uh, See if I can address go into presenter mode, and as a result, I'm going to essentially um, I'm not going to see uh, I'm not going to see the questions. So I, you know what I'll do is I'll do the questions at the end. I think it'll be best that way. So let's rock and roll into this. Let me share my screen. Uh, let's go with this. -da. And let me know, guys. Can you see this? I'm going to put up my thing. All right. Can you see my screen? Yay or nay? Yay. Perfect. Awesome. Okay, great. So, um, well, first of all, guys, I really want to thank you all for being here. And, uh, you know, I wish we were meeting poolside again in Phoenix with the sun shining on my back, but we're not. It's, uh, uh, it's going to be a great time nonetheless. It, what, what we're going to lack in environment with sunshine, I'm going to hopefully make up with in content and in uh, system. So um, my, my big thing with regards, and, I, and I've been talking about this now, and I've been on this, uh, I've been on this, uh, this kick now for some time, and, and it's, it's because I want to uh, really have our authors, and, and it doesn't, you know, I want them to make the shift from book, um, from authors to business owners. And one of the things we need in order to make that shift is two things. One, we need to have offers. We need to learn to sell stuff. And Aaron and Jocelyn this week, two weeks ago, I guess, two, three weeks ago, have finally made that shift to selling stuff. And way to go, bud. I'm super proud of you. And I got Leela Gonzalez selling stuff. I got Leela in Scotland selling stuff. And, I, and, and these are the people that, you know, I've been sort of personally hand-holding through this. And I can't handhold everybody, so I want to create a system in order to uh, walk you through the process of creating an offer. But before we talk about creating the offer, which is at the end of this presentation, um, I want to go one step above that first and talk about the marketing system uh, before we create the offer. The reason is because the marketing system is probably the secret weapon that makes this whole thing happen. And I was talking to um, one of our customers the other day, one of our clients, and um, she, you know, she was talking about how, you know, she really wanted to work with a specific kind of person, and that the people she was currently selling were not the ideal client, and she wanted to get a higher level of client, and she wanted to refine that client, and. and and I, I saw this immense focus on finding the perfect client, the perfect avatar, and striving for that. And I mean, I'm all about that myself. But I will tell you, after you know, 15, 13, 15 years of doing business now, and you know, several, uh, you know, what, eight or eight or nine businesses now, and hundreds of millions of dollars of revenue through these businesses, the trick is not to 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 try to find the perfect customer all the time. The trick is to fill up the sales funnel so friggin' much that the perfect client comes out at the bottom of the funnel. 
And this is a key distinction. And instead of it being, you know, just, just trying to consistently go after the one client and trying to sell one client, what you want to do is you want to talk to as many people as possible and get them and, and, and essentially funnel them down until your perfect client comes out. And as we go through this, as we embark on this journey together, the top part of this funnel that I'm going to show you is the marketing system. It's the marketing funnel that will end up yielding the perfect customer. I'll give you a, a classic example. At Publish Your Book and Grow Rich, at Blackheart Books, we put about 2,000 people in the top of this funnel. So I'm pointing to my slide here. I'm putting 2,000 people at the top of the sales funnel, and out of the bottom comes, say, 10 authors. But I've done it so often, and I've done it so many times, that I can predict, predictably predict I don't know if that's a word, but you know where I'm going with it. I can predictably forecast for every 2,000 people I put at the top of the funnel, out comes 10 customers at the bottom. And when you could, when you can accurately forecast your business to that extent, now probably none of you are there right now, and that's okay. It took us a while to get there ourselves. But when you can get it to that level, it becomes a magical scenario because then the only thing that's missing to grow the business is money because you know how much it costs you to put someone at the top of the funnel and you know how much money you're going to make at the bottom of the funnel and you could just keep recycling the money and then you could build what, what, what I call a truly scalable business. Now, you're probably not there now and that's okay. But I want to, and, and that's not what, you know, this whole, this, this teaching is not about all of that. It's about just the first step towards that, which is creating awesome offers that sell. And, but I want you to catch the vision. I want you to see the vision of where this is going. I want you to see the vision of where it's going to go in one year, two years, five years, 10 years, how the, the idea, and on my first slide, you see here, I have a money machine. The idea is to turn this book into a money machine. And the way to do that is to build one of these funnels that is so tight and so consistent and so predictably forecasted that you know how much money for every lead you put in, you know how much money you're going to make on the bottom. And that's what I want for you. That's the ultimate vision. That's the ultimate money machine. That's what we're shooting for. Now, in order to get there, we need, actually before I move on, can you guys just type and let me know in the chat box if that makes sense. Like, is everybody on the same page? And, and I can see your video. So, you know, Donna, you could just shake your head or give me the, give me the yes, nod or something so that I know. Perfect. So, cause, cause that's the vision I'm going for. That's the, the, at the end of the day, that's what I want for you guys. And like I said, it may not happen this month. It may not happen this year, but if we keep pushing forward, we're going to get there. So now to understand the funnel, to truly understand the full sales funnel, you need to understand how it works. So the first layer of the funnel is what we call strangers. And the strangers are, the in this example, the strangers are the pieces of mail you mail. So if you mail 10,000 pieces of mail to complete strangers, say zip codes, you don't know who they are. They're just strangers, but you're sending out 10,000 pieces of mail. Now those people who open the envelope, so if they physically open the envelope, they become suspects. So if out of 10,000 you mail, one in 10, meaning 10%, uh, open the envelope, well, now you've got 1,000 suspects. You still can't do anything with suspects, so we've got to go to the next level, which is out of that, you're going to get 30 prospects. That is 30 people who will take you up on what, on, and I put AMD here to remind me of your attraction marketing device. Now you all have attraction marketing device, a free book, a free webinar, a free course, a free video series. Um, uh, maybe it's a free special report. Maybe it's a free audio book. Maybe it's a free audio course. Maybe it's a free video course. Maybe it's a free home study course. It's something for free. And if you remember the formula, something that is a high perceived value to the customer, 
but low cost to you. That is an attraction marketing device. So out of 10, so we mailed 10,000 strangers, a thousand people physically opened the envelope and out of the thousand people, 30 said, Hey, I'm interested. They raised their hand. They took some sort of action. And that's the key there. The key between the suspects and the prospects is the action. If they take an action, they are much more likely to take to, to move on your offer and that's what you want. And you need a mechanism, which is the attraction marketing device. Now I say this all the time, but this is, this is, this is key. Uh, everybody I think on this, uh, watching this training, whether live or recording, you are saying, Oh, I, I got it. I understand what some attraction marketing devices. I get it. I, I got it. But my question to you is, are you using them? And do you measure it? How many people, if I ask you this question, how many people have taken you up on your attraction marketing device in the last week? Can you answer? Do you know? Do you know how many people took you up on your free attraction marketing device, your free book? your free audio course, your free home study course, your free webinar, how many people took you up on it? If you don't know the exact answer to that, then you're not properly set up already. Already you're off the tracks. So if, if at Blackheart, if I had a meeting right now, I can get my director of marketing on the phone and I can tell you right down to the, right down to the single unit of how many people have opted into our various, because at Blackheart we have about 57 attraction marketing devices. I can tell you how many have opted into every single one of those. And, and, and it's not just a black card. My wife and I own a spa and I get, we, uh, as an attraction marketing device, we give away a free eyebrow waxing. Um, and, and I can tell you, I just have to open up my system right now. And I can tell you that we've had 18 people this week, just this week, 18 people have wanted to get the attraction marketing device, meaning a free eyebrow wax. So you need to have this giveaway. You need to have this, this tool, this mechanism. And I would say that, of, I mean, and Jerry Roberts taught me so many lessons, but when I understood this, when I understood the power of an attraction marketing device, it changed everything for me because up until that, and, and some of you will be able to reference this story. When I first started out in business, my wife and I owned a company. It was a health company. And I used to, and this is, you're going to find this funny, but I used to call the office. Like I would call myself because I thought there's no way these phone lines are working. You know, I would call myself to make sure the damn things were working. I would email myself to make sure my email was working because no one was, was requesting my services. And I thought to myself, this is crazy. And then Jerry taught me that it's, it's because you don't have the very appropriate step before the sale, which is the attraction marketing device. So the job, before you start selling stuff, the job is actually to fill up your pipeline so that you get as many prospects as possible. So if you're just starting out and your focus is, you know, is, is just trying to drive people to your service, to your service, to your service, I think you're personally doing yourself a disservice. I would be driving people to my book. This is a great book, by the way, Messy Manager. You can get a free copy of this bad boy at messymanager.com. You might want to check that out. See, there's an AMD right there. So every single day I have people that request my book for free. And then from there, I can sell them services. Now, I don't, I don't do consulting. I don't sell them any services, but you do consulting. You have services. You have offers. And that's how you're going to get them. So. My point is, is even though this is a training on how to create a kick-ass offer, and I'm going to give you that, I promise you, I have a five-step system, it's going to blow your mind. But I want you to focus on the attraction marketing devices. If you don't have this, and if you're thinking to yourself, man, if I just had more leads, I would, I would be able to sell more stuff, that's what you're missing. You're missing an attraction marketing device. And then there's a whole other thing about the, fr the top of the funnel. Uh, how do you get leads into the funnel? And I'm going to talk about that next. Okay. So the, so the three critical parts to any funnel, there's three parts. The first one is have a good attraction marketing device. Once you have one good one, 
then create a second good one, then create a third good one, then create a fourth good one, and just keep going. But there's three steps to an important funnel. The first one is the attraction marketing device. Okay, we're good on that. Now, once you have your hot prospects, the next thing is, is the, the next level of prospects is the hot prospects, which is these are the people that take even more action for you. These are the people that take it one step further. These are the people that, I'll give you a perfect example. Let's just say in your offer, okay, let's just say your attraction marketing device is your book, like this one, Messy Manager, great book. If this is your attraction marketing device, and, and you have the next step of your funnel is to get a free consultation, which I highly recommend, by the way, that you give away free consultations, 20 minutes, 15 minutes, 30 minutes of your time to show people how good you are, to show people how valuable you are. The people that show up to your consultation, they are hot prospects. They are that much more likely to buy. So I hope you're catching the drift here which is your job as a, as a business owner and your job as a marketer and your job as a salesperson is to move people down the funnel. You start out by having a stranger. You move them to suspect. You move them to prospect. You move them to hot prospect. And the next step is you sell them something. You sell them uh, the product. And you can, you can see by these numbers, and I, I pick these numbers specifically with the 10,000 email or the 10,000 mails or the 10,000 emails. One in 10 is gonna open. Out of one in 10, 3% are gonna respond. That means you only got 30 actual leads in this point, guys. You've had to send 10,000 either mailers or emailers or whatever else, and I'll show you how to do that after. You only have 30 leads. Out of 30 leads, you only got really 10 hot prospects. And out of the 10 hot prospects, you're gonna close five, let's just say. So this is, this is critical. Now, before I move on to the next thing, let me ask you, does this make sense. Is everybody clear on this? Give me a head nod or give me a, give me a, a, a Skype, uh, not a Skype message, but a chat message. Everybody's on it. Okay, great. The funnel is cool. I love it. The trick becomes, like I said, there's three parts. The AMD, which is in the middle of the funnel. While the next two important parts of the funnel are the top, and the bottom of the funnel. These are the most important elements. And uh, I am going to be putting out a ton of content this year and forever on the top and the bottom of the funnel because the bottom is the sales part. But you can't sell anybody unless you have loaded up the top properly. So if you don't have enough people going into the top of your funnel, you will never have enough people to sell. Plain Jane. At Black Card Books, uh, we, we are spending countless resources figuring out how to take advantage of all the leads that are coming in, which let me tell you, after being a business owner for, uh, for 15 years and having many, many days of wondering, shit, is this thing even on? Is this thing working? Now I have the opposite problem where I'm thinking, I got to take advantage and maximize all these leads coming in. At Black Card Books, we generate somewhere between uh, 20,000 to 30,000 leads a month. That means 20 to 30,000 people a month coming into our various attraction marketing devices, which means in order to get that, we are generating millions of people at the top of the funnel. The question is, how do you get the top of the funnel full? Great question. There's only two ways to do it. Either you got to buy the traffic, or you have to borrow the traffic. Now, if you're buying the traffic, that means you're putting out advertising dollars. And I'll, I'll go through various ideas today on various advertising mechanisms that work in today's day and age. And then the other thing is some, some of our authors are like, listen, I'm tapped out. I don't have big advertising budgets. I might be able to do 100, 200, 300, 400 dollars a month, but I can't be putting out thousands or tens of thousands of dollars into advertising. I need to, I need a lower cost option. And there is one. It's called, you've got to borrow the traffic or borrow uh, the leads, which is that's done through hustle. So you can see I put the dollar sign for buying and I put the H for hustle when it comes to borrowing. So there's really two, 
two areas. Now, the best strategies, and this is what we do at Black Card Books, is we do both. We do lots of advertising dollars, somewhere between two, well, probably about, right now we're between 250 and $300,000 a month in ad spend. That's what we're spending. It wasn't always there. For years, we did nothing but the borrow, the hustle. But right now, we're in a position where we can hustle and buy, which is perfect because now, you know, we're doing, you know, 20 to 30,000 leads a month, um, which is great. But in your particular case, you might only be able to hustle right now. You may not have any advertising dollars. You might be able to put $10, $20. So what do you do? Good question. So the various activities, I'm going to go through one of these one at a time. And, and this is where I will take questions um, because a lot of people have questions here regarding what's the best thing? Should I do this? Should I do that? And I have, after spending this amount of money, millions and millions and millions of dollars on advertising and the various mechanisms, I have a pretty good idea of what's working and what's not working and where you should put your money, where you shouldn't put your money. So let's go through one at a time. And if you have questions, uh, just, just chat them to me and I will answer them. First one, PR, public relations. Now PR is mostly a hustle strategy, and it could be a buy strategy if you're uh, paying an H, a PR advisor or a PR a, pu a publicist or a PR firm or a PR relations person, but you can do PR all on your own. And in fact, at Black Card Books, we give you everything you need to do your own PR. We give you a consistent and, and ongoing support so you can get into your own publicity. You can get into um, news articles, radio shows, TV shows, blogs, uh, podcasts. And, and if you look at um, and and if you look at the Facebook group, and if you look at JerryRobert.com/blog, you will see ongoing all of our authors every single day all over the world getting their own PR. So I know you could do this, but PR is a great way to drive leads. Give you a perfect example. Let's just say you uh, do a podcast with a company. Um, let's just say you do a podcast. Like I'll give you an example. In the coming uh, few weeks, we're going to be doing a podcast, Black Card Books, with GKIC, which is Glazer Kennedy Insider Circle, which is a company that Dan Kennedy founded years and years and years ago. And we're going to be doing. We're going to have them appear on our podcast, and we're going to appear on their podcast. Now we have hundreds of thousands of people who follow us and they have hundreds of thousands of people who follow them. Well, when we appear on their podcast, we are going to be exposed to their entire audience network and vice versa. So we are definitely going to be driving leads big time um, through the through PR. So PR is a no brainer. Uh, Mary Beth and, and our PR team, we have a media department we've been building out now for six, eight months. We're doing great. If you want the thing with PR, let me just plug this real quick. The thing with PR is media begets media begets media. And you need credibility in the media to get onto more media. And if you want Mary Beth's help on how to do that, how to guarantee you to get media, to establish essentially a portfolio of media so you become that instant credibility as it relates to the media's perspective, talk to Mary Beth. She'll show you that. We have a thing called the Big News Media it's a friggin' steal of a deal. It's absolutely, pr it's priceless, man. You pay once, you, you appear on all the big ones, CNBC, uh, ABC News, uh, Wall Street Journal. Any one of those can pick you up. It's just incredible. You want to check that out. But PR, I'm taking all the PR I can get. My assistant is constantly getting me through our media department, by the way. That's the other thing, and I'm probably going, I'm probably harping too much on this, but I don't have a special media person. Jerry Robert does not have a special media person. We freaking work with our media team. The same one you get to work with, we work with them. So uh, our media team is second to none. Uh, my hat's off to Mary Beth for putting together such a great team, and it's just the beginning, guys. I mean, we're six to eight months into building our PR team and our media team. Wait, wait, wait till we're six to eight years in. It's going to be incredible. So that's strategy number one, public relations PR. Strategy number two, networking plan. Now, this is my personal favorite. Um, I have personally used the networking plan to drive black card books at the beginning, early on, 
we were doing just a networking plan. We were doing over $2 million a year in sales by through the networking plan alone. So no one is going to tell me the networking plan doesn't work because I've done it myself. All of these strategies I've done myself. That's why I, that's why I speak on this stuff. I only speak on stuff I do myself. And the networking plan is cool. Now, I'm not going to go through the details of the networking plan because there's a whole training section on that. So if you're interested in that, um, get in touch with uh, uh, Mary Beth. Where should they get in touch if they want more details on the networking plan? Maybe send you an email or something. What do you think? Yeah, I'll show my, uh, my email in the chat here and then they can just email me directly and my team will get it to them for sure. Perfect. There's a whole training on the networking plan. It's an hour or two hours training that I did just on that. And like I said, guys, it's a hustle strategy. Does it mean, does it, mean it takes time? Friggin' right. Does it mean it's hard work? Friggin' right. Does it mean it's going to cost you a lot of money? No, it will not cost you a lot of money. Very little money goes in a networking plan, but it's hustle. You got to work for it. But it's, it, that's the one way to get the leads in. Next, joint ventures, my personal friggin' favorite. We also have a ton of extra training on joint ventures. Again, Mary Beth, it's I, I'll give you the email, I'll read it out to you. It's I promote, so letter I, promote, P R O M O T E, at blackcardbooks.com. And if you email that, we'll send you the extra training on networking plan. We'll send you the extra training on joint ventures. Again, today at Black Card Books, um, our joint ventures, get this, get this, our joint ventures represent about 30% of our revenue. That is a massive, massive freaking number. And it's all because of the joint ventures we put into place over time. And there aren't many of them. It's not like there's hundreds of them. There's probably five joint ventures, which represents 30% of this company's business. And I've just established another huge joint venture partnership, which you're going to be hearing about in the coming week or two. Uh, massive for us, massive for us. I mean, I personally invest at least 20 to 30% of my time, my personal time in joint ventures. That doesn't include the joint venture manager that we have that works full time for us. That doesn't include the team of people we've built around that joint venture manager. But joint ventures is the fastest way for you to get to several million dollars. And I personally think, frankly, between PR, networking, and joint venture, you got yourself a three to five million dollar business right there, guys. You don't even have to spend a dollar on advertising. You just got to work your ass off to drive the leads using those strategies. Okay, next, social media, another hustle strategy. I'm not talking about whole social media um, advertising. That's another strategy. I'll talk about that one after. I'm talking about social media, using the power of social media. And again, in this, I just realized that we've actually done training on all, every one of these, Mary Beth. I'm, I'm impressed that we've been putting out content like crazy, but I wrote a fantastic special report called uh, How to Use Twitter to Generate Tons of Leads and How to Establish Meaningful Relationships on Twitter. And that goes into the, to the social media strategy. And again, email I promote at blackcardbooks.com. I promote at blackcardbooks.com. And they'll send you that special report on social media. But again, Look at this. I'm four strategies in here, guys. I'm four strategies in. You've got yourself a three to five million dollar business. You haven't spent a freaking money on marketing so far. Incredible. Next, newspaper ads. This is where it starts to cost you money if you want to do newspaper ads. Now, that's one way to do it. I personally am not a big fan of newspaper ads. I haven't had it work for me. I'll tell you in a second where I think you should put your ad dollars, but some people have done newspaper advertising successfully. So, uh, if that's for you, go for it. It's not for me, but it might be for you. Next, Facebook ads. This is where I think this is where I think you should be putting at least 50% of your marketing dollars today. Now, it may not be like this forever. It may change. But right now, Facebook ads are the, um, uh, and Mary Beth, remind me of this. We should do a whole, I should do a whole training on Facebook advertising, actually, and I think I will. Um, we have done some Facebook advertising training about 18 months ago, but a lot of it needs to be updated now. Um, so I think I'm going to do a further training on it, but I think you should be putting 50% of your money into Facebook ads. Uh, it's one of the most, um, economical, highest return on an investment. We are currently a black card boat spending of our say, say we spend $300,000 a month on advertising. Two hundred and seventy-five to two hundred and ninety thousand dollars of that three hundred goes into Facebook ads. 
So it is 95% of our marketing budget. That's how powerful this stuff is. Facebook ads, hugely, hugely, hugely powerful. Uh, let me put a quick plug in this. Actually, you're going to want to email Mary Beth on this too. I hope I'm not talking too fast, guys. Mike, am I talking too fast? I feel like I'm cranked up here, bud. That's great. Doing well. This is, this is just water, eh, guys? Just so you know, there's no coffee in here. It's just water. So with Facebook ads, if you want black card books to manage your Facebook ads for you, email Mary Beth and I will put you on the beta list. Uh, in the next two to three months, we will be coming out with a Facebook advertising product that we are going to sell to our clients. Meaning, if you want us to show you how to do your own Facebook ads, we'll show you that free of charge, no problems, part of being a, an author. If you want us to do it for you, we will charge you extra money for that. If you want to be on that beta group and you want a ridiculously good deal, if you want to get ridiculous value, then email Mary Beth, I promote at blackcardbooks.com, and she'll put you on this special list. And when she's ready to sell it, say we're going to sell this thing for two, three thousand dollars a month, she's going to give you a ridiculously good price and call you and say, listen, if you want to get in early, here's your price. So if you want us to uh, drive Facebook ads for you, uh, now, you want to get in touch with Mary Beth and, and email that. With regards to Facebook ads, you do not need to spend hundreds of thousands of dollars a month. Uh, at the spa that I own, my wife and I, our marketing budget is not nearly as big as uh, as uh, Black Card Books. We probably spend we probably spend fifteen twenty grand a year on on our on our advertising budget. Our marketing budget's a bit bigger, but on our advertising budget. $15,000, $20,000 a year. And you know what? We probably put about five, $5,000 a year into Facebook ads. So it's not a lot of money, guys. We're talking about $400, $500 in a month, but it makes all the difference. I'm telling you, it's phenomenal to drive leads into the, your funnel. Next, radio ads. Again, a lot of people do radio ads. A lot of people are successful at it. Uh, where you spend your advertising dollars, like whether you do newspaper, whether you do radio or whatnot, that, that depends on what kind of business you're in. Some of you are information marketers. Some of you are uh, authors and you want to be speakers. Some of you have local businesses. The more local you are, i.e. I like my spa, the more newspapers and radios makes a little bit more sense. The more global you become, like a speaker, like an author, like an information marketer, the less that stuff makes sense. The more I want you to push towards Facebook ads and online media, okay? Last, uh, uh, last but certainly not least is direct mail. Again, um, the value of paper is going through the roof. Because there's so much digital these days, if you have a good paper product and you will see black card books coming up with a new paper product, nobody knows about this, not even Mike Turton, not even Mary Beth, nobody knows about this, but black card books in the next two months by mid July will be coming up with a new paper product, meaning you're, we are physically going to ship stuff to your door in physical form, physical form. Um, and, and it's going to be huge and it's going to sell really, really well. And because the value of paper has gone up. So direct mail, could work for some people. That's totally, that works. Uh, there is one more, and I just wanna check something here, guys. There is one more that I don't talk about uh, in here, but I gotta add it to my slides, remind me, Mary Beth, is uh, Google Pay Per Click. Uh, Google Pay Per Click is uh, phenomenal. I'll, Google Pay Per Click and Facebook advertising should consume at least 80% of your budget, maybe more. Now, let me, and I should do a diagram for this, but you'll have to, you'll have to uh, satisfy with my, uh, my hand signals, which is the more local business, the more local your business is, the more pay-per-click advertising through Google makes sense. The more service oriented your business is or product oriented your business is, meaning you're selling a physical service like a chiropractor or a massage therapist. Um, or something like that, like a service-based business, the more Google PPC makes sense. The more you sell a tangible product like socks, 
or books, you want to sell physical books, or wallets, or earphones, the more physical your product is, the more Google PPC makes sense. The major difference, and I'm getting granular here, guys, so I hope you're appreciating this, and I hope this is what you wanted. The more, um, how do I put this? Uh, Google PPC is much more for having people making a buying decision right now. When someone types in spa services Peterborough, which is where, where my spa is based, spa services Peterborough, and my advertisement through Google comes up at the top, that is priceless because they are ready that day, right now. They want to make a decision right now. They want to pick up that phone, they want to call someone, and they want to book a service. So I want to be right then, right there at the top of that page, and I'm willing to pay for it. On the flip side, Facebook advertising is changing. It used to be mostly impression-based, mostly brand building, and obviously some direct response. Definitely there's lots of direct response, but when you're, when you're advertising on Facebook, you're essentially seeding, you're seeding into people's mind and you're subconsciously penetrating their mind because they're not interested. People, people are Googling spa services Peterborough, but when they go to Facebook and they see me every day with posts, with good promotions, I'm getting in their head. And I am in, I'm, I'm building up the impressions in their head and I'm becoming what's called top of mind association, TOMA, top of mind association. So Facebook ads is great for top of mind association and direct response. Google PPC is great for buying decision stuff, which is why the two together are kick ass. So I spend, I spend about 30% of my budget on Facebook ads and 70% on Google PPC. That's for the spa because I'm very service-based and I'm very local. Go to, uh, go to Black Card Books. We're a global organization. We're massive. We're, we're in 14 different countries. So I have a very difficult time dominating Google because it's so expensive. So I put most of my budget into Facebook ads. So let me just ask some of you guys, now that I have you and I have your attention, and hopefully you're not asleep. Are you guys asleep? Let me just take a look here. I'm going to look, look through the chat. No, nobody's asleep. That's good. Um, so let me ask you guys, based on your business, if you want to ask me where, and this is the time, if you want to do it, you have the opportunity. This is why I want to keep the, the, this training exclusive to you guys. Ask me where you want, where I think you should put your dollars if you want. I'm happy to take all those questions. I'll address every one of you if you want uh, because it's different for everybody. It's based on the business you're building. Um, you know, I cannot say that it's, you should put, everyone should put 80% of their money in the Facebook ads and 20% of the Google PPC because it depends on your makeup of your business. But, um, so does anybody have any questions you want me to answer on that or should I just keep rolling? If you have questions, you can jump in. Aaron, unmute yourself and jump in. What were the two things you mentioned on Facebook? You are really targeting top of mind, and what was the other thing? Uh, so top of mind association, and, I, and I'm going after their subconscious conditioning. All right, and um, to pour your question, um, you said pay-per-click is for local and buy now. So Jocelyn and I are wedding officiating and, you know, marriage prep sessions with people that can be remote. So would you say that sounds like more Facebook advertising? Yeah, I'd be putting more into Facebook, uh, Aaron. Uh, now, if I would do some research, though, on uh, Google, because um, depending on how much, you know, how much it pays to be a wedding officiant or a, or a or a wedding prep course because if, if, if you're getting a lot of traffic on that stuff, it may be worth putting a little budget into Google. But at this point, based on what I'm seeing, I'm seeing like 80% Facebook ads, 20% Google at most. Cool? Yeah. I mean, I could, I, would, I could ask some more questions on the direct. The direct mail is probably the only other thing that we would resonate with. Mm -hmm. And... I guess because we are open to go, you know, we'll, we'll officiate weddings remote. So it could be anywhere in the world. We'll travel. You just have to pay for us to be there. 
Sure. Well, the direct mail, now the, the, where direct mail makes sense is when your audience is so niche that you can, you can, you know exactly uh, where they're coming from. I'll give you a good example. Um, so if you were a small business startup product, uh, a service, let's just say you're a service, small business service, and it's specifically made for startups, meaning people that are brand new. Well, you can get access to a list of the, it's called the Small Business Association of the USA or something like this. And every time someone registered a new business number, every time, you get notified and you can send them a letter. You, you could essentially buy that access, which is incredible. Well, if that makes sense, that might make sense for someone. And you could buy them just for Phoenix. You can buy them just for uh, Gilbert. You can buy them just for Denver, whatever. That might make sense for someone. Uh, direct mail. Um, the, my personal opinion is the smaller you are, the more direct mail makes sense. I'll give you an example. If you, are, if you have a prospect list or a client list or you're in an area where you're, you're managing a, a list of 1,000 or 2,000 people, I would be direct mailing the shit out of that. Sorry for the funny. But, but I'm passionate about direct mail at those levels. At Black Card Books, we literally have millions of people. I can't direct mail everybody. It's just too, it's just too much. It, it becomes uneconomical the bigger it becomes. That's my personal feeling on it. Even at the spa that I own, um, once we got over the 4,000 client mark, I stopped direct mail. It just became too expensive. expensive. Every time I put a piece of mail out, it was costing me 10 grand. I mean, that's crazy. So I, I wasn't seeing the ROI on it that way. On the flip side, I own a real estate company where we were super small. I mean, you know, we, we own 16 apartments, so our client base is like 100 or less. Now, we're direct mailing that all the time because it's nice and small, it's direct, it's niche, I know exactly where to go. So, the more contained the audience is and the more uh, you know about them and the more you can contain it, the more I'm, I'm, I'm okay with direct mail. That's my answer to that, Aaron. Thanks. No problem. Um, John asked, anger and stress management, one-on-one -on -one coaching and webinars. John, I would put, uh, if you're doing, now John, if you have, uh, uh, let me take a peek. Uh, okay, so my, my feeling right now, I'd have to look at your website, John, but my feeling right now is I would be going probably 50% into Facebook ads and I would be going 50% into, into uh, Google pay-per-click. And then I would measure it. And that's the other thing is I could do a whole weekend boot camp just on measuring. You know, we, we measure everything, every element, every click we measure, every response we measure, every phone call, I measure everything. And the way I look at it, and John, this is the answer to yours, is I would put 50 in Facebook ads, 50. And by the way, when I say 50 in Facebook ads and 50 in Google PPC, I'm saying that's where I would put my advertising spend dollars. I would still be doing the PR, networking plan, JV plan, and social media. All of you should be doing that. That's a given, okay? Because you should be doing the, if you have the dollars to put into it, do the dollars and the hustle. You've got to do both. Uh, but John, specifically for you, I would do 50% Facebook ads, 50% PPC. And then the way I look at marketing is like this, lead gen, lead generation, that's the way I look at it. I look at it as I have levers. So in this case, I have essentially eight levers, and I am literally measuring the return on investment of every lever every month. And as one becomes better, I just crank it up. So if you did 50-50 on Facebook ads and Google PPC, you might notice that the Facebook ads are pulling more. The next month, I would go 55-45, and then 60-40, and then 70-30 maybe. Because when something works, you it's like... Uh, and you want to double down on it more and more and more. So 50-50, John, for you on Facebook ads and PPC, measure it like crazy. Met, I, that, that's worth repeating. Measure it like crazy. And then start changing the levers based on the results. Um, fun fact on this is never, never, and it took me a while to understand this lesson, never turn anything off, guys. Meaning, 
if, if let's just say Facebook ads is really starting to work really, really well and you're cranking it up and now you're like 80, 20 and then you're like 90, 10, never turn off the, the PPC. That's leave it at 95, five, whatever you want, but don't turn it off. The reason is because it's not going to stay the same. This is a moving target. It might be that way today. Next month, it, PPC might start to work. Facebook might change their algorithm. Facebook, uh, Google might change their algorithm. Next thing you know, the levers are coming back the other way. So that's critical. Okay, next, Todd. Sleep, meditation, stress management, using Facebook, Google AdWords, along with solo ads. Good, you track through pixels, smart man. Tags and custom links, any recommendations? Um, yeah, you know what, Todd? We probably have to have another conversation. I probably have to dig into your numbers a little bit. Um, what, what percentage are you doing Facebook? What percent AdWords? If you're, if you're local, and this is the same with John, right? If you're going after local and you're driving into a service, 90 FB, 10% Google. Interesting. How's the ROI on that? I would definitely be going more. Your tier one, I don't know what that means, but um, I would I would be going more, Todd. I would definitely be looking to spend more on Google, especially if you're local. Uh, I'm again, I'm I'm seventy percent PPC on my spa, thirty percent Facebook ads. I use the Facebook ads to um, to support my email blast, to support my list, to support my Google ads. But I'm spending more money on. Uh, okay, got it. I'm spending more money on um, on Google if you're local, meaning if you're Phoenix or Mesa or Gilbert or Scottsdale, um, if you're targeting the entire USA, if you're tar even if you're targeting a state, unless you're big and you got big dollars, if you're small just starting out, uh, you really want to narrow narrow your audience as much as possible, and and that includes geography as well. So, does that? Yeah, definitely look more at Google. And if you're, if uh, Todd, if you're, if you're going to spend some big dollars, some bigger dollars, doesn't have to be big, big dollars, but if you're going to spend some bigger dollars, i.e. like low thousands per month on Google, um, I used to live there. That's why I know that, Todd. Uh, I look at a company called Ad Hoc. Ad Hoc. Uh, we've been using them. Man, they're pretty awesome to crack the Google code. It doesn't work unless you're spending like, you know, thousand, two thousand, three thousand bucks a month on Google. But I tell you, uh, you know, it's, it's ROI. Now, before I go on to the next thing, guys, is the thing with all of this stuff, all these lead gen is you have to position it properly in your mind and on your profit and loss statement. These are not expenses. These are investments. So every one of these, you should be able to track back a return on investment. And if you can't, then you need to get your shit together and figure out how you can. Because every dollar you put into Facebook ads, you need to show revenue for it. If you can't, then you, you shouldn't be doing it. Same with Google PPC. When you're investing X number of dollars, you have to be able to, to show the, the result. I'll give you an example. At Black Card Books, we know that every dollar we put into we put into marketing, advertising specifically, every dollar we put into advertising, we generate ten in revenue. Well, that's a beautiful place because you just just start investing at that point. At the spa, I acquire clients for five dollars a client, and I make sixty dollars a session. I'm acquiring them for five. So let me ask you this, guys: Would you trade me five for sixty? That's what we do every day. And that's the way, that's where you got to get it to, but you got to track your numbers for that. So, okay. Any other questions or should I move on? Oh, Anita's on too. Wonderful. Cool. Okay. I'm going to move on. Oh, go ahead. Well, I, uh, I didn't know if you're going to touch questions at the end, but I did have another question on like Facebook ads. Shoot. Well, I, had two, I had two questions on uh, the Facebook ads and a Google pay per click basically what you're advertising, is it the AMD or what's the highest dollar item that you could actually yeah. make sense for? I would be advertising my AMD. Yeah, I, and that's a, that, I'm really glad you said that, Aaron. Great question, I'd be advertising my AMD. Um, when, when I advertise, um, like 
you know, we have various AMDs, but we're always advertising special report, free book, free session, free preview, uh, free pool party, you know, whatever. Something for free because uh, now once you get good at doing the AMD advertising, I'm not saying you can't get to the next level of advertising straight into a product or straight into a service, but um, for, for us that are just, for, for, for this community here that's just starting, advertise the, uh, advertise the AMD. So last question on that then. So you said uh, Google pay per click is for people that want like buy now options. So is that not the best for AMD? Yeah. So it, it is the best because they're going to, what they're going to do is your AMD has to quickly connect to a sale at that point. So I'll give you a perfect example. If you're advertising, like if, at the, if I'm at the spot, I'm advertising free eyebrow waxing and they're coming from Google, I'm calling those people right then and there because I know they're ready to book. And, I'm, and, and my redirect, I'll give you another very good example. If you're on Facebook and you go to my free eyebrow waxing, I will redirect you to my website or my blog for more information and more content and more uh, convincing. If you come from Google and go to my AMD, my free eyebrow waxing, I'm going to redirect you straight into my booking system so you can book an appointment. And that's where knowing the difference and understanding and measuring everything makes a difference, Aaron. But those are two great questions, pal. Thanks. No problem. Any other questions, guys, before we move on? My assistant isn't here today, so I'm going to excuse myself for two seconds. I need more water before I keep going. Well, JD is doing that, maybe we can uh, have somebody sing or something. Aaron, why don't you sing for us? <laughs> Oh, so la mia. <laughs> I love it. Sorry, guys. It's just uh, dry in here. So, um, okay. So, that's – so, I just want to recap where we're at because there's three massive concepts we're covering here today. And, you know, we could literally talk about these – for a weekend and then we could probably spend another week working on them together but you know we're trying to cover this in, in an hour or two so the first concept is AMD most people don't have AMDs it's a massive mistake don't make that mistake have an AMD and promote it second mistake uh, second thing concept is this concept of lead generating at the top of the funnel most people are not doing nearly enough of that stuff actually I would I would cause you to audit yourself right now Take a minute, audit yourself, and ask yourself how many of these things, and I've only given you like nine different concepts here. There's probably 90 different ways to generate leads. How many are you in fact doing? And you may be sad to come to the realization that you ain't doing any of them. You're just sort of waiting and praying for the phone to ring, but without doing the lead generating on the top of the funnel, that phone is never gonna ring. So the top of the funnel. And then the last part, and what we're going to talk about next, which is the bottom of the funnel, which is really key. Now, let me show you this. So your, this is what I call your offer. Now, this particular, the, these following slides, no one has ever seen before. These are brand new slides. I just developed them. And what I tried to do is I tried to think, because for the longest time now, you know, there's nobody better in the world at creating offers than Jerry Robert. I mean, well, you guys know because you bought all his offers, but by the time he's done creating an offer, you are literally salivating, wanting to buy it. And that's the, that is the, um, the antithesis of a good offer, is it has to be that powerful. So I asked myself, and I started thinking, well, what, how do I, syn how do I syn synthesize what Jerry's doing? How do I put this into a system so that all of our authors can create these authors. I need a simple five-step system. So I, I went through all of his offers and I just went through it. I've been doing this now for, for several, for weeks, just going after different, different offers and looking, okay, what's included in this one? What's included in that one? And I, and I essentially created a matrix of the five elements that's in every single offer and I've never presented this before. So you guys are the first people in the world Round of applause to you guys. First people in the world to ever see this. So the first thing, let's go through the critical components of an offer. First thing is your offer has to have two 
to three times, two to three times more value than you're asking for in return. If you want to sell a $5,000 product or a $5,000 service or, a, or whatever, you need to build up $15,000 worth of value. And you need to be able to prove and explain that there's $15,000 worth of value in here and then sell it for a third of the value price. Does that make sense? Give me a head nod, Todd. Let me know you're listening. All right. So if your offer, if you want to sell something for 10 grand, then you've got to build up $30,000 worth of value, 20 at minimum, 30 preferably. If you want to sell something for $1,000, then you've got to build up $3,000 of value. You, want to, you, know, you get the idea. So two to three X in value. Every one of Jerry Roberts' offer has two to three X in value. Second thing, structure. This is where I find so many people uh, are get tripped up and, and they end up not moving forward. They end up stopping in their tracks because they don't know how to structure the offer. And the structure I, that I looked at and I looked again, I looked at all of Jerry's offers and I thought to myself, what is the common thread here? What is the one, what is the, the structure type that I continually am seeing uh, day in and day out? And this was it. So in most of Jerry's offers, he offers an annual something. So the offer, let's just, we're building out something for Todd. Let's just say we're going we're gonna to build one out for, for funding. Stress management, right, Todd? Perfect. So, so Todd's going to build a stress management program that he's going to sell for $15,000. It's got $15,000 worth of value. He's going to sell for five grand. It's a one-year program, let's just say. It's going to have an annual something, meaning an annual convention. It's going to have a quarterly something. Let's call it a quarterly mastermind. It's going to have a monthly something. Let's call that a monthly one-on-one -on -one session. It's going to have a weekly something. Let's call that a weekly uh, video course. It's going to have a daily something. Let's call that a daily motivational quote. So you see, there's a daily something, a weekly something, a monthly something, a quarterly something, and an annual something. And this is what you get to choose from. Various done for you elements, various workbooks, printed books, conferences, summits, subscriptions, email courses, softwares, apps, physical stuff, coaching, workshops, courses, communities, masterminds, membership sites, one on ones, um, audits. Audits are great. Like, as part of Todd's uh, offer we're creating with him, why doesn't he do a monthly audit, a monthly stress audit? I mean, how cool is that? Um, could be group coaching, could be email coaching, could be revenue share. So if I go back to the, um, to the structure, so it could be an annual convention, it could be a quarterly audit, it could be a monthly one-on-one -on -one session, a weekly group session, and a daily motivational quote. But I want you to catch the fact that this really gives it structure. It gives it something that people can wrap their hands around. And that's oftentimes, the missing element to these offers is you've got, it's, it's too airy, it's too fairy, it's too nefarious, it's too up in the air. When you structure it like this, you give it meat, you give it concrete evidence, and people can wrap their hands around it, and it's gonna make it much easier for you to sell. Any questions on that so far? Give me a head nod or a thumbs up. Beautiful people, or chat. All right. All good. I'm only, there's, there's five key elements, critical components to the offer. That's only the first two. Here's the third. This is super powerful. Number three, social proof. Do not tell me how good you are because I don't care and I don't believe you. But why don't you rely on social proof and show me, show me other people um, and overwhelm people with value and proof. And this is, if you think back to Publisher Book and Grow Rich, if you think back to the Instant Author Program, if you think back to everything we've ever sold you, 80% of our sales pitch is proof. I just load you up on proof. I'm not, I'm not telling you how good I am. I rarely say that, although I do think I'm pretty damn good. Uh, but I don't rely on me telling you how good I am. I let my customers, I let my audience, I let my... Uh, 
my community tell you and show you and prove to you how good I am. And that way you become convinced. Because it's not me telling you, it's the community. So many people miss the social proof. Now, the new rule for social proof between us here that we're talking about this and those watching this on the replay, the new rule for social proof is I want you to go hog wild, ape shit nuts on social proof. Just overwhelm them with social proof. Stop doing one testimonial or two testimonials. I want you to put 20 in there. And, and if you think about, again, back to Publish Your Book and Grow Rich in the boot camp, if you think about, you know, why do you think, why do you think we bring in the Skype calls? We do four Skype calls throughout the weekend, two on Saturday, two on Sunday. Why do we do that? Proof. Now, we don't position it that way. We don't tell people, hey, look, we're going to throw up some testimonials here and bore you to death. We position it and we couch it in a case study or a learning environment for you, but it's a proof. It's, a, it's all part of social proof. Why do you think that when you're at the boot camps, we ask you to come up and tell about your story? We don't coach you. We don't prepare you. We don't, we don't uh, counsel you. We don't advise you. We just want your honest opinion. And it comes out authentically, and that social proof is critical to the offer. So social proof number three, absolutely priceless. Okay, number four is the secret sauce. This is the big one. This is the big one. Number four, risk reversal. And I even put a little lightning bolt here beside it just to, to emphasize the oomph of this thing. You could literally all quadruple your sales tomorrow if you added a risk reversal, which means put the risk on yourself, remove the risk from your customer. And the way to do that is a money back guarantee or a double your revenue, or you have to promise some promise of result to them, some promise of pain or some promise of gain. But you want to make the promise and you, and you got to stand behind it. Now there's two, there's two critical components here with risk reversal. One is stop freaking out. They rarely want their money back. Rarely. Like I'm talking one out of every thousand will want their money back. Rarely. So that's the first thing. Stop freaking out. They rarely want their money back if you do a good job. I'm assuming you're going to do a great job. And the second thing is, is you want, you want to make sure that you go emphasize if you're going to err on any side err on the side of too much so i'll give you an example mary beth and i were selling we, we launched this new premium service menu i'm sure you've heard of it you probably many of you have bought various things on that service menu um well we're offering a double your revenue guarantee meaning if you buy something on that service menu we're gonna you're gonna guaranteed uh generate twice as much money as when you're paying us for that worth of physical value and in exchange they got to do a full pay which is 35 40 thousand dollars depends on the country so the point is is They've doubled their money just like that. Just by investing in this program, they've doubled their money. They've gotten twice as much value in physical products or we've, we've, we've shrunk the risk down. The, the, the whole concept of funding and sponsorship, that's also a part of the risk reversal. So when I used to sell, uh, this was years ago, six, seven years ago, I, I used to do consulting for a messy manager. And I would sell, a, uh, it was a $5,000 coaching program. It was three months. And I guaranteed people that they would at least generate $5,000 of additional revenue in their business in that three month period, or I would continue to work with them as long as it took. So think about it. If you have a problem and you think I can help you set, solve that problem, and I guarantee you, yes, you're gonna put five grand up to join my program, but I guarantee you, you're gonna generate at least $5,000 of additional revenue, or I'm going to continue to work uh, with you until you do there's no risk in it for you. You're trading 5,000 for 5,000. That's what happens in the mind So it's a no-brainer and that my friends is the secret sauce It's the risk reversal that makes all the difference 
So a lot of, and, and a lot of big companies are starting to realize this, you know, like if you buy a Mac, you buy a Mac, you guys are thinking, why do you have a box of a Mac on your computer? I'm a big Mac fan. But if you buy a Mac product, you have 30 days money back guarantee. You can bring that product back on day 29 or day 30 or day whatever and get 100% money back guarantee uh, because you didn't like it, because you're not satisfied. And if you actually read the back of most products, and I'm talking about Clorox, I'm talking about Mr. Clean, I'm talking about any product that you buy at Walmart or Target or wherever, they'll all say money back guarantee right on the back. And if you don't like that product, you can take it back to the store and say, this product sucks, take it back, and they will take it back. And that's a risk reversal. So if it's good for them, it's good for you. So that's number four. Now you're ready for the big one? That, and that is the big one. The fifth one is, is critical as well. And I'll show you the last slide. And by the way, I only have three slides left, two or three slides. This is the four critical components. The fifth component is, is massive as well. But then I'm gonna show you a diagram that I created that I've literally never, like, I, I dug deep last night, I, I was, when I was reviewing my slides last night, I thought to myself, something's missing. There's one element missing of this presentation. I don't know what it is. And as I was reflecting on it, I came up with the single greatest diagram I've ever come up with as it relates to designing the offer. And I'm going to show it to you in a second. So, so the number one, just recap, number one, two to three X value. Number two, structure the thing so they can put their hands around it, give it some meat, give it some thunder, make it physical. Physically physical. Number three, social proof. Don't tell me how good you are, prove it to me. Number four, reverse the risk. Put it on yourself, not on them. Number five, bonuses. Give bonuses as part of your offer. So you're, and, and the way to structure that is, is when you have your order form, and just look back at our order form, you get all of this stuff as part of the price, and then I'm going to throw this on for free. No charge. Just going to add it on for free. Maybe a Ducati bike, for example. Now the bonus is critical part to closing the sale. And here comes the diagram that I'm super proud of. And, and I've never, Mary Beth's never seen this, Mike's never seen this, but this is what happens emotionally. This is the, this is, this is why Jerry Roberts is the best in the world at this. He, when he's selling you, he has taken you on an emotional roller coaster of logic and emotion, logic and emotion, logic and emotion. And I never realized it until I put it in this graph form. So the first thing is two to three times value, okay? So right away, you get emotional, because you're like, holy shit, I only got a part of $5,000, but I'm gonna get $15,000 worth of value. So now you're emotional. You're in the right side of your brain. Totally emotional, two to three times your value, you're thinking, this is cool. Then he slaps you with the structure, annual, quarterly, monthly, weekly, daily, and now it becomes logical. So he throws you from the right side of your brain to your left side of your brain. He gives you the structure. He gives you the details. He gives you the overwhelming uh, evidence of all the stuff you're going to get. And you're going to get this on a monthly basis and this on a weekly basis. And at this point, he's really stacking it on, okay, as part of the offer. Then he flips you back into emotion, social proof. So he gives you all the proof. He, he doesn't hold anything back and he overwhelms you with proof. What about this? What about this person? Look at what they did. They got into Time Magazine. They generated $100,000 extra. They built a multi-million dollar business. Ba-boom, ba-boom, ba-boom. He, he's not telling you how good he is. He's letting other people. So he's got you emotional again. Then he throws you back over to the left side, the, uh, the logic and he gives you the risk reversal, which is, shit, I mean, you can't lose. So logically, now you're thinking, man, emotionally, on the right side, you're thinking, I want this. I think I'm gonna do this. And then, and then, but your logic's getting in the way. But then he said, he takes the risk out of it for you. What, what do you think? You think, well, shit, I gotta do this now. There's no risk to me. So he's got you an emotional brain, getting you all jacked up and excited, giving you all the extra value, and then he throws you in the, in, in the logical to give you the structure. Then he gives you the social proof. Then he takes the risk out of it. Now you're thinking, holy shit, I think I'm going to do this. And then he stacks the cool and he throws the bonus down. 
And at this point, you're thinking, well, screw it. I'm in. And you guys all know what I'm talking about because you bought IAP. You know what I'm talking about. And this emotional roller coaster, I had never, I have never put this in a physical form. I mean, I knew it was taking place because I understand him and I, we've talked about it before, but I had never put it on paper. And man, when I, I mean, this slide is going to be my new best friend because this is what building an awesome offer is all about. It's using the left side of the brain, the right side of the brain, the emotional, the logical, taking people from one to the other and delivering exactly what they want because they want to make this decision, guys. They want to buy your stuff. They want to buy your service. You just got to help them get there. And the secret sauce to this, to this emotional roller coaster is the following thing, which is, remember this, people buy emotionally, but they justify logically. And this is why the roller coaster works so well because people want to buy emotionally. If, and remember this little cute tag phrase that I, that I heard one time that I've never been able to forget, which is, if you tug on the heartstrings, the wallet will come popping out. Why do you think Jerry makes you cry all the time? Tug on the heartstrings and the wallet will come popping out. Take them on this emotional roller coaster. And then the final thing, this is my last slide, and then I'll be happy to answer as many questions as you want, is practice makes perfect. You know, there's, there's not enough said, and, and I'm, I've been on this, uh, this kick for the last six months, there's not enough said that takes place with, with the practice that Jerry Robert has put in. And yes, he's the best in the world. And, and yes, Black Card Books is on, on route to be a $100 million company. But man, he's been refining this thing now for 33 years. He's been practicing this and, and testing and trying and selling and creating different offers. So you may not get it on your first go round, but that's okay. You know, be patient. Patience is, is a good thing. And, um, and I think that practice does make perfect. And you ought to keep testing, keep refining, keep trying. But this structure, this five-step structure, um, we've, never, uh, we've never put it out there like that. And I, I hope it really adds some clarity as to how to design a proper offer. And I didn't want to do, just to wrap this up, I know this webinar was supposed to be just about offers, but I didn't want to just talk about offers because you, if you have the best offer in the world and it's on a piece of paper, and, and, and you're ready to sell it, but you've got no clients coming in, you're, you're no good to nobody. You're not helping yourself. You're not helping the clients. You need those clients coming in. So I thought it was very fitting to combine both the funnel of getting the clients through the door, getting the clients down the funnel, and then what do you sell them? You sell them that perfect offer, and it's using that five-step system. So I'm done with the talking, guys. Got any questions? One second, I'm just gonna get out of this thing. Go ahead, Aaron. I don't have any other questions. I just want to say thank you so much for doing this. Like this is so much value. It's so clear. It's so good. I totally get it. And I'm always I'm just blown away by how much you give to us uh, all the time. So thank you. No problem, man. I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Any other questions, guys? Be happy to answer. If you uh, if you want me to uh, if you want me to review your offers. Um, just real quick, I, I, I'm crazy busy these days, but I'd be happy to review your offer. If you want to put something together and send it to me, uh, I'd be happy to review it to me. You can send it to uh, Mary Beth. Where's that, Mary Beth? I promote. Should they send it there? Yeah, send it to I promote at Black Card Books. It'll make its way to me. I'll mark it up, um, and, uh, and then I get it back to you. And uh, I can't do a whole lot of back and forth, but I can at least give you one review. Uh, but don't send me any offers that you're emotionally attached to because I might I might chew it up and you know use the old red pen on it, but uh, but if you follow this system, guys, it really gives you a a step by step guide that uh, and and, I, and I'm you know I mean a lot of this stuff I knew and we did it internally and we did it subconsciously and we did it, but until I I did that chart, I didn't you know it was all happening subconsciously for us, and I'm really glad that this that I I did this because it. It got me to put it on paper and really, you know, it's going to be a lot of value to a lot of people. So that's all because of you guys. Okay, Mary Beth, let's bring this thing to an end.
All right. Sorry, I was muted there. Um, okay, well, that was awesome. JJ, thank you for this. You, um, I learn from you every single day. And just being on this webinar with everybody, I think it's important when we mastermind together because I just learned so much more. So I love doing this. And guys, you have I promote email uh, at blackcardbooks.com. So if you need anything or any follow-ups to this, reach out. And anything that JG has uh, mentioned too, just let me know, and uh, we can we can connect further. And th there's also, uh, and I don't know, I don't think it, I don't know if we mentioned, I don't think I mentioned it, but if it, we do have this new thing we just launched called the Income Multiplier, which is essentially, I mean, it's you know, I'll give you the shortened version of it, which is essentially it's us crafting your offer for you, myself and Mary Beth, crafting your offer for you. And then it's a one year program. It's a one year long month program. It's 500 bucks a month. That's the beta price. I told you guys about beta prices. So that's what we do. We do the same, right? We eat our own dog food. That's what I love about black card books. So uh, it's a, it's a year long program. It's 500 bucks a month. And what we do is on a, on a quarterly basis, we design an offer, we launch it, we enhance it, we retool it, we change it, we modify it, we help you sell it, we show you how to sell it, we review your calls, we review your presentations, we modify, adjust, and then relaunch and relaunch and relaunch. So essentially, what and the reason I created it is because you could do it on your own, and, and I'm not gonna do anything that I haven't taught you here today, I'm just gonna do it for you. Um, but the most important thing is compressing those decades into days and really uh, so if you guys want uh, to talk about that, Mary Beth is the, is the one to do. Where can they go to buy that, Mary Beth? Like I, I wasn't, I didn't know if I was going to, I wasn't planning on sort of saying this stuff, but. Yeah, I'll type it in here. It's uh, www.pabgr.com forward slash income multiplier. So I'll get that in here. So if you guys, if you guys want to talk about that, or if you want to talk to Mary Beth or myself and find out if that's right for you, um, it's, uh, it, it's a no brainer. And naturally we do a risk reversal on that. What's our risk reversal on that, Mary Beth? We'll continue to work with you until you make at least that money back or more. So, no brainer. We'll continue to do no it like, as long as it takes. No brainer. So, okay. Well, that's great guys. If, uh, if you join the income multiplier, just, uh, just a quick heads up on that. Um, is, is I'm currently, and, and this is probably the last group I'm doing, frankly, Mary Beth has been awesome. And, but I am actually uh, personally heading that up with Mary Beth. I'm doing the coaching right now. I'm doing designing the offers. Um, uh, that will not be happening in the future. In the future, we're gonna have a team doing it. But for now, as part of the beta group, because we want the results, right? We wanna blow the results out of the water. I'm doing it myself. So. If you want to work with me directly on that stuff, then you want to join that group now uh, and just let Mary Beth know. So send her a message. Um, you, you either have her on Skype or email I promote or just go to that link and buy it if you want to do the income multiplier, 500 bucks a month. I mean, if we design, I'll give you an, an idea. If we give you, if we design an offer uh, that's going to sell, um, you know, it's going to sell in the three to $5,000 range. You know, what, we got to sell one or two here. Come on. It's a no-brainer. We're gonna sell. We're gonna sell one or two next week. Let's get to work. Let's get to work. Okay, I'm out of here. I got another meeting. Thanks, Thanks guys. Thanks, No problem. My pleasure. Cheers. Thanks, everybody. Bye, bye. Bye. Thanks, everyone.